It's apparent that many were disappointed with the turnout of Gears of War Judgment. I mean, with Gears of War Judgment, there are plenty of things for a Gears of War fan not to like. Things such as no down but not out, removal of locusts in the more traditional multiplayer modes, the new loadout system, and the different flow of the multiplayer modes have caused plenty of people to be upset and simply have a huge amount of distaste. But I wonder, should Gears of War Judgment have received such high expectations to begin with? I mean, back when Epic was preparing to release their very first sequel, Gears of War 2, Cliffy B frequently stated that the game would be bigger, badder, and more badass. It was sort of a tagline for the game. Gears of War 2 seemed to be aiming higher in all of the areas that Gears of War 1 had already reached. Upon Gears of War 2's release, fans soon discovered that Cliffy B and the rest of the Epic Studio had delivered. Gears of War 2 simply added to everything Gears of War 1 was. You know what, in fact, it, it, was, it probably wasn't a simple feat, but nothing was really removed, but rather all aspects had undergone an evolution. Gears of War 2 was the introduction of features such as meat shields, grenade planting, wall canceling, horde mode, and 5 on 5 competitive versus modes. Gears of War 2 was also the first time we've seen weapons like the Scorcher, Mortar, Mulcher, and Ink Grenades in any Gears of War game. Gears of War 2 also had its own version of the Gears of War 1 map favorite, Gridlock, and the story introduced a new Carmine brother. And with Gears of War 3, Cliffy B dropped the tagline, Bigger, Badder, and More Badass, and simply stated that Gears of War 3 would be the best looking, most enjoyable, most feature rich, and most importantly, the most polished Gears of War we've seen yet. Upon Gears of War 3's release, fans soon discovered that the studio had delivered yet again. Gears of War 3 was the first time we've seen features such as trading weapons, sharing ammo, spotting enemies, and a mantle kick. Gears of War 3 was also the first time we've seen weapons such as the Incendiary Grenades, Digger Launcher, Retro Lancer, Sawed Off, uh, Vulcan, and the Silverback. Gears of War 3 was also the first for the series to have Team Deathmatch, Arcade Mode, Beast Mode, playable female characters, weapon skins, medals, and four-player co-op campaign. Gears of War 3 was yet another entry in the series to keep all the things that were included in previous games, but in a more evolved state, similar to what Gears of War 2 had did. Gears of War 3 also continued the tradition of featuring the map favorite Gridlock and introducing a new Carmine brother through the campaign. Gears of War Judgment is a different story. Gears of War Judgment was to be the very first game to take the focus away from Marcus and Dom in the story, but there was much more than just that that broke tradition. Gears of War Judgment initially featured a whopping zero, zero number of familiar modes or maps. I mean, we do have Team Deathmatch, but it's not the same Team Deathmatch, especially when you consider the flow of the game. And overall, Gears of War Judgment seemed to be missing more of Gears of War than it added. Locust became exclusive to Overrun, most of the multiplayer modes don't include down but not out, you no longer can start a match with both an assault rifle and a shotgun, and thanks to the design of each map and mode, the game oftentimes feels frantic and unlike a Gears of War game. And the breaking of the tradition does not stop there. Gears of War Judgment doesn't even feature Horde mode, it doesn't even feature the map Gridlock, and it did not introduce a new Carmine Brother. But this, this beckons for answers. This, this gives me a question. Why would a game with the Gears of War name be so unlike a Gears of War game? I think we can answer that question given we take note of tradition and do a little research. With every Gears of War game up until Gears of War Judgment, the studio made it apparent that they were aiming to produce an even higher quality product than its predecessors. With Gears of War Judgment, however, not only was the intention to aim higher throughout all aspects never established, but the studio delegated much of the development to their studio People Can Fly. Was the goal to make something radically different from other Gears of War games? Was this goal such a priority that they'd even risk removing parts of Gears of War that fans love and would eventually demand? Former Epic Games employee Quindell Hoyo tweeted to a fan stating, and judgment is meant to be different and to take risk because it isn't Gears of War 4. We wanted to not be complacent and be bold. With that being said, it would seem Gears of War Judgment was a game that surprised and disappointed many of us, but was this because we simply expected the wrong things? Are we defending a Gears of War tradition that has never been broken? And what of a Gears of War 4?